Hi everyone, hope you are doing good. Welcome to the next video on my YouTube channel. This is the platform where I come and share my knowledge and experience with you all. My name is Saurabh Bharti, Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional. Without further delay, let's start the today's topic. So today we are going to talk about one of the feature which Microsoft has released in D65 Finance and Operations. And this feature is uh, is around the vendor recurring invoices. So we are going to talk about this feature, uh, what this feature is. Similar feature was available in uh, account receivable for the customer using the free text invoices. But now Microsoft has released this feature for the suppliers as well. So let's start and understand what this feature is. So uh, Vendor recurring invoices uh, uh, are the, I mean, is the functionality which uh, helps you to create the invoices uh, on a on a on a based on a frequency which you can define on your template, and this will reduce the effort by your in invoicing uh, you invoice user so that that person need not to enter the information again and again for each and every month uh, invoice the use case uh, uh, a typical use case we can think about it let's say your company has rented a place and there is a rent agreement with the vendor and so now you know that every month you are going to receive the similar invoice with the similar amount and with the, with the same vendor only the date is going to change right now if you take this example now your vendor uh, i mean your invoice user need to enter the same amount of data uh, again and again every month so how we can automate this process so let's talk about that and how this process can uh, help us in reducing this manual data entry for the invoice users before we start with the uh, process here uh, one thing which we need to understand that how it will work so we need to enable the feature in the feature management uh, there is a setup uh, uh, for the number sequence which will create for which will be, which will be created for the recurrence ID. We uh, so and and once we do this, once we run this process, so it is going to use the pending vendor invoices feature. So it is going to create the pending vendor invoices, and the lines can be created for the invoice in the template for both the procurement categories and the items. So let's see that how the end-to-end -end process looks like. So the end-to-end -end process will be first you create a template, apply that template with the vendor account, and then you can use that template and process your invoices. So let's move to the system demo and see that how it will work in Microsoft Dynamics. So as I said, uh, first thing is that we need to enable the feature in the feature management. So there is a feature called as enable recurring AP invoices. So you need to enable this feature. Once this feature is enabled, what you can do is that you can go to accounts payable and under accounts payable, you have got the invoices uh, 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 menu item in the group and there you have something called as recurring invoices. Now, when you have, when you expand this recurring invoices, you have got something called as vendor invoice template. And this is where you define the uh, template for your recurring invoices. Now, if you see that I, you can define the name and the description here, I have taken the similar example, which I was talking just now that let's say it is a rent uh, recurring invoice, which I need to record. So I have given the name as rent, then the posting profile and the common attributes of the invoice, for example, payment terms, method of payments and other things if you want to define. You have also got an option of uh, applying the financial dimensions on all the lines and on this invoice. So you define that and then you can add the lines. So when you add the lines, you have a option of uh, defining the description. So I can define the description for this. Then I can define the applicable text attributes. I can select either the item or the procurement category. So I have selected all, all, all three different types of line. One is the against the category. Uh, second one is the service item and then is the stock item. But one thing to note here is that this stock item is also going to behave as a non-stock and it is going to hit your PNL uh, uh, only, not the inventory. So 
what i understand right now is that you cannot have the inventory invoices recorded against this again for that you need to go with the purchase order process only so once you define this template uh, you need to uh, go to uh, your vendor master and then when you go to vendor master you uh, click on the all vendors and there on the vendor form if you go to invoice tab you will find something called as recurring invoices and here you can click on new and map your uh, uh, that invoice template recurring invoice template which you have created you start the billing date and all all the information here you define the frequency that on what frequency you want to generate this recurring invoice so i have selected monthly and every month and uh, in the bottom you also get that when the next generation date is when the last time it was generated i have already tested for one or two months so that's why it is showing the dates here now you can also look at the history here so it will show you like all the invoices which have been generated using this template what is the status so all these informations are available for you now if you go back to your template there also you can see that uh, this template has been assigned uh, to how many vendors so which means you can use the same template for multiple vendors as well if you, if, if it is required and it also tells you the history that how many invoices has been uh, raised using this template for this vendor and whether it is a, a active template or not so all this information is uh, uh, defined and your template is ready right now and you have assigned to your supplier now how do you generate this so you go to accounts payable uh, and then under the accounts payable you have this invoices option itself so now here you expand this recurring invoice and click on the generate invoices so i have generated only till already till 31st 30th april now i will generate on 31st of may so i will select this and then i can select the template the another thing is let's say if in your case if you have got multiple templates and every month it's a month and activity and you are going to process multiple templates so you can select multiple templates here and you can process them in a batch way batch batch uh, uh, process as well so you define this and then you click on ok now once you click on ok this is going to uh, create your uh, recurrence ID and recurrence invoice number. So the recurrence invoice number is USMF-003. Now this can be uh, set up in your uh, number sequences that what format you require. So as I said, this is also another prerequisite which you need to have it. Now once this is done, let's go and look at that how this will, uh, how this invoice looks like. So I can go and check one place is that post vendor pending vendor invoice is here so if i click here i have two invoices already posted this is a third one so if i see this uh, i have got this invoice here okay so it is just showing me the totals here now if i click on the details it is going to show me the details about this particular invoice and this when i click on the details if you observe this takes me to the pending vendor invoices now what it is also doing is that it is also populating the uh, vendor invoice number automatically so it is taking the recurrence id and hyphen one now you might ask that when it will be hyphen two so if let's say there were multiple template and the same recurrence if you are generating multiple invoices it will assign the number accordingly hyphen one two three four five six seven and on it has taken all the invoice received date invoice date and everything if you see the lines are populated accordingly the amounts has been picked up so all this information has been generated automatically now i can go back and if i have to let's say uh, post my invoices so i can just click on post vendor invoices so i have this option so i can click on the post and transfer and the moment i click on the post and transfer it is going to post this particular invoices to my vendor account so if you see this has been posted the status is yes now i can go and check this validate this invoice posting in my all the invoices like which is your invoice journal so if i go to my invoice journal i can go and check whether uh, it has posted this invoice or not 
I'll go and sort by the new. Now, so if you see, this is my invoice, it has been posted. I can go and click here and check that whether it has uh, uh, generated the subledger transaction. So it has generated the subledger transaction. Uh, if I go and see the lines, it will show me all the lines which I had in my uh, template and with the amount and the tax calculation has this uh, posted the post sales tax. So yes, it has posted the sales tax. So I can go and check the posted sales tax for this. Uh, apart from that, if I want to see the voucher uh, accounting entry, so right now it is showing me blank uh, and it is because it has not been transferred yet. So I am going to transfer this manually and check that what uh, accounting entry it had generated. So if I just go and refresh this, so if you see based on my category and the mapping what I have for the item in the procurement category, it had generated the accounting entry and credited my vendor, debited my tax and the expenses. So that's it for this video. Hope this feature will help you in uh, uh, in uh, configuring and uh, designing the solution for your customers who are having these recurring invoices on the supplier and they have to enter these invoices manually every month and this can be automated. Uh, another thing which we can do is that uh, these invoices uh, can also be uh, I mean processed along with our subscription billing the deferrals and other things and also we can think of the invoice process automation the moment it is created it can be submitted automatically to the vendor uh, vendor invoice journal if the approval is required and then through that we can just automate the entire process so if you see you would not go and manually create any or any of these things you just need to run your couple of batches and the invoice process automation to automate this end to end so that's it for this uh, video hope this helps you to solve this problem for your customer and thank you for watching uh, this and see you in the next one thank you